Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to uh, paint this lighthouse and in a way that um, is very simple and I'm going to call this a, a beginner to intermediate um, a demo tutorial because of the intermediate part is just because of draw, the sketch drawing out this lighthouse it can be uh, quite complicated in its shapes and that sort of thing. But there's something about lighthouses that are just calming. Uh, this one's at, uh, I believe it's at sunset. Uh, I can't remember, it's from uh, PEI somewhere, Prince Edward Island, Canada on the East Coast. And uh, that's the Atlantic Ocean you see there. Uh, the study of this photograph is uh, important because you have to look and even in the photograph you'll see some different colors, some oranges and maybe some turquoise and different things in there. Uh, these colors here, the slight uh, variations in tone give you the shape of the bottom and the same with the top here. We've got really bright, medium and a little bit darker and then of course extremely dark for the windows. Um, the roof lines, it's just, it takes a little bit of study to plan what you're going to do to this painting uh, or how you're going to go ahead and paint it and without overworking it. And I'm going to work it from top to bottom when I paint this. This I'm going to paint with a large brush. I'm actually going to paint it with a flat brush today just to show you that uh, less is more. Just make some nice uh, easy brush strokes on there and just let it paint itself. And then I'm going to use some salt. I've got some kosher salt and some rock salt here. I'm going to put it onto these rocks let the, the, let it paint itself and we'll see what happens. So let's grab our brushes and let's paint. Now the flat brushes I was talking about at the beginning I'm going to use are this uh, Allegro Sable Light. It's a synthetic uh, um, sable like sable light they call it from opus art supplies uh, in canada here uh, and it's the allegro ones i believe they're on sale right now too and i do have an affiliate link for them in my uh, description um, that will save you some money as well on your whole order uh, this is an escoda versatile brush also synthetic and it's it's a it's a flat brush but it's very small you can see the tip of it and as you put pressure on it it squares up the sides as well and gets a little bit bigger so you've got great control and you also use it this way and paint very very fine lines a nice brush as well this is a uh, Princeton uh, sable actual sable brush I don't tend to use them much because they're super expensive and I find them a little bit on the soft side they do hold a lot of pigment and I'd rather use the synthetic brushes now anyways but uh, we're going to give this one a go as well and show you, show you what uh, we can do with it now you've obviously noticed that I painted the background here. I've given this thing the first wash and in my other videos you can see how to do this. So I'm not going to go ahead and explain all that over again. Um, but I will tell you that I, I wet the background first and then I did my gradient wash down to here and I added some blues as we go as I went. And uh, you got to you gotta let it dry. you got to paint it and then let it dry and not fuss with it too much. And then same with down here. I went ahead and I, I painted the, the lighter blue in here and then I dropped in some darker blue and uh, cobalt turquoise in there and I used a little bit of, add a little bit of uh, a red to the blue here and got some more purpley colors down here. And you can see the, the kind of steamy foggy effect that it did and that's just from letting it dry without getting in there with your brush and overworking it. So we're going to go ahead and start painting uh, the lighthouse from top to bottom here. I'm going to leave the background. It actually looks a little bit light to me now. I could go over this with another glazed wash and now make it more orangey in the sky, but it really isn't uh, in the photograph. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep it calming and like that. And here's a white piece of paper. So you can see the difference. It's quite a bit brighter. Uh, well, the white is brighter, obviously, but it's it's quite a bit. Uh, the more color than you perceive if you're not comparing it to anything. So it's good to do this and to just see where you're at with uh, with the pigment on here. So normally I'd be painting this sitting down just because it's easier to do some fine detail when you're sitting down. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint it standing up so you can see better. And I'll put these other brushes aside here and I'll put this ruler aside over here too. Sorry for getting in the way. And I'm just going to start with the top of this lighthouse here. And I've got some colors already mixed up on the palette. I don't know if you can see this side of it here. And 
it's a fairly dark I'm just looking at the photo here too we can start and then we can also change this as we go here just gonna pick up some pigment here and I don't want to be too dry well, I also don't want to saturate my brush too much with water because it's done want a pretty intense color here and we're going to come down here so using this brush sideways you can really cut into this line into here and this you got to be quite careful doing this way here uh, painting this way and then the top part here I'm going to get in the way for a second here and I'm just going to paint it in and less is more if you paint a fine line you need to add to it it's a lot easier than trying to remove pigment afterwards so that's going to be enough there and then the rest of this I'm just going to go ahead and paint that in and as it dries I can darken these panels it's an indication of shape in here and I'm not going over the sections that I paint more than once really here it might look like it but I'm just filling in the whites and I don't want any I'll leave a little bit of a white sparkle right there just for now and I can fill that in later if I don't want it um, and then coming down here the rest is all red I'll show you the picture here again and it's quite dark I'm gonna end up putting another coat another uh, layer over top of that to darken the areas that I want but I'm basically doing getting the, the lightest color here that I want and mixing up some more color here a little bit more red in there and now I can go ahead and do this next part here but I'm gonna I want this darker to here already so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna let it come down so I'm like making a bead here like a like I've done before in some other paintings that roof line extend into here and this panel I'm gonna make it darker but I'm gonna leave that one this is dry enough I didn't have my brush overloaded with water so it's gonna work out there and then this I'm still working with my bead here letting it come down carefully and this panel here is a little bit lighter so I'm gonna leave that just for a minute here as I come down the left side now it's easy to make a mistake when you're not when you're concentrating on making straight lines and things here so I'm gonna go ahead and paint that right down this is where the flat brush really comes in handy you notice to get wider I just push down a little bit harder on the brush and I'm resting my hand on the paper which is just fine because it's all completely dry I let this dry overnight and I'll bring this down here and into here like that and then this is uh, under here it's still brighter than that so I'm just gonna lighten this up just a little bit here just added a little bit of water to my brush here that's all I did and you can see where it's lighter there and I'm gonna leave a little edge here because I don't want it bleeding into this next section well, I plan to anyway and this next little bit is really light color so I'm going to kind of leave that right to the end and then I need to bring that underneath here do this part here down there and then this is quite bright here the same as this up here it looks a little bit too dark to me up here so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to wet it a little bit actually I'm just going to lift it with the brush there so I wet it and lift the pigment with the brush so there it's lighter and I'm not going to make that look the same tone as that there see that works there and then this roof panel here I'm also going to wet it and pick up a little pigment there that'll do there 
And that creates your different, you know, the different colors in the top little uh, panels there. So we're going to continue on here. The next is uh, this little railing, and I want to let this dry here, I believe, before I do that. So I'm going to just continue on with the next little section here. Now I've got a nice. Let me get the color off of this brush. It'd be easy to. Red is such a powerful color, and you've got to wash your brush well to get it out, or use a different brush. But this one's just the right size for doing these panels here. Actually, I can, well, yeah, I can switch. I'll switch to that sable brush here, just to show you what it's like. Pick up a little of this purpley blue that I've got in my palette mixed up here for this white, because the white is not really white a lot of times. Go ahead and do that. Now I don't want that blending in there. In this panel here, and I can tell already I'm going to have to go darker in that panel there. And then this is quite white over here, but it's got a reddish orangey tinge to it. So I'll go ahead and paint the next section in here. That's the same color. And it goes right to there, down there. This, right to this line here. I'm not worried about that window because it's going to be dark. And that part there, I'm just going to leave that for now. Anything else here? Now it gets kind of orange as we go over there. So I'm just going to go a little bit of neutral gray. And we're going to go ahead and glaze over this right away here and let it come down. So I put that, I mix that pigment a little bit wetter and I'm just letting it come down into the wet uh, part here and it'll just blend itself like that. That's looking better and then I don't want that so I'm just going to pick it up with the tip of the brush. And then go ahead and glaze over this part here again. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that window. I'm just going to paint right over this window. Run that down into this area here. I'm going to leave these two little white posts here, or lighter colored posts, I think. So. And that. That's all right down here. I'm just going to leave that for now until I decide what color to do this railing here. It's got a kind of a reddish hue. I was thinking about just dropping this in there, but there's some little sparkles. I can actually do that a little bit here. This brush is a little too big for this, so I'm just using the tip of the brush like this. And I'm coming down just to indicate some rails in here, and then I'll add some reddish hue to it later on, or pinkish tone. I think in there, go ahead and put in a little bit more in there and fill that in. There like that. So up here I'm going to go ahead and mix a little color here and dry brush that in. And it'll have to be darker. Especially in here in this area here. I'm just quickly dragging the tip of these bristles. The bristles are separated just a little bit because of how dry this brush is here. So I'm liking that. And then I'll go in here and I'll do this section here. That's a little bit. There we go, just like that. Okay, so the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to switch brushes again to the smaller one. I'm going to do this roof panel here. Mixed up some color here. Some red cobalt blue and uh, uh, burnt uh, sienna or burnt umber. And then you just change the hue as you, uh, the tone of the 
change the hue as you need be for whatever color you're going to want this roof panel here you can add a little red to make it red or some orange into there that's looking pretty good um, so I'm leaving that the next section is that white color and into here it's just a light kind of orange glow from the sunset here so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that into here like that like a bit of a glow, uh, same with this here. I might just let that settle a little bit. That's going to dry a lot later. I'm happy with it. That's fine. Um, and then into here, this panel here is a little more orange. From the glow of the sunset and these little bars into here, I'm just going to paint them in for now. Just like that, and I'm going to glaze over this to change the color while it's wet. Go ahead, there's a little bit of an orange hue to this part here too down there, yeah, and all these sections, so. Go ahead and paint that in, yeah, no, I'm just going to do that one like that, just to give that sense of brightness in there. Now we've got a big contrast here. So I'm going to go ahead and change that color just a little bit. You just add a little bit of blue. There we go. I'm kind of purpley blue. I'm just going to tone that down the orange a little bit here. Just like that there. And then same with these little bars here just ended up being just a little bit too bright here so we'll do that so and then I'm gonna go ahead and go over this a little bit here just to blend that and it's looking good so far okay so the next step here is to do this bottom part and I got some colors already mixed up here on my palette that'll work quite well I start with the darkest one over here and that's too, not thick enough here. Go ahead and put some sepia in here. Like that, and I did have some colors mixed up here too. There's some leftover colors from my palette here. I could use a bigger brush for this section here, but this is the one I have. I'm going to do a little negative painting here. Uh, the uh, rocks down here are going to be a little bit darker, but I'm just going to make it look like some rocks in there. And this section here is needs to be darker. And also with a little bit of red, so or orange, just like that. And same goes with those rocks there. Went over that little edge there. I'm just going to go ahead and dry that off. I just want a little bit brighter there. Yeah, that's looking pretty good there. Dry that off a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and do this railing. I'm just picking up some color here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it like that. So mostly dry brushing. I've got some pretty dry pigment on my palette here. and. It's a zoomed in photo, so it's kind of helping with the not get too tight on this because it makes it a little bit uh, pixelated there. So, but that's looking good there. Just a hint, it just gives you an indication of this railing here. And go a little darker. You can do a little, a few more little marks into here just to make it look more like a railing. This brush again is fairly dry. It's almost like dry, what well, is kind of like dry brushing, but I am kind of just dabbing those lines in there. And then in here where the light is, there's some, I just need to change the tone of it just a little bit. Because you see that that's just the white of the paper there still. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to wet this. Because all the red is dry, but don't go over the red, just going to wet it all. 
like that. And then you can drop in, just drop in a little bit of a blue color in there. Here and there like that, it just changes the tone of it. And then you can go a little bit more, a little bit darker. This corner into here. With the wet paper, it's very forgiving. If you don't like what it looks like, you can always just get out your paper towel or pick it up with the brush like we did before. So, looking good there. Okay, now this down here needs to be darker and it's dried sufficiently where I can go in again and put another layer in there. So I'm just going to get some neutral tint, neutral gray. And it looks like there's kind of a window down into here. So I'm going to put that in like that. And the bottom of this railing is actually quite dark. There's a shadow under here. Take that right to there. I'm going to take it right out to here. I bleed down. There's a little bit of a shadow under there too. Just like that there. Now my window is bleeding a little bit more into the next area than I, more than I wanted. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix it just like that. That's dark. And just leave it. Those little brush marks are kind of neat in there. And I quite like them. And that I'm going to pick up that pigment right at the bottom of that railing because it's just coming up a little bit too high. And that I don't like that one there. I want that a little brighter. That's actually not bad right there. But I can just drag it down a little bit and blend it in like a shadow there. And then same with these ones here. I'm just wetting the paper below there. And I'm going to let it come down. And it's looking good there so far. Okay, looking at the left side here, looking at the study in the photograph again, I'm going to show it to you again here. You can see the left side here, just you need to be aware of the tonal difference here, the uh, value difference. So this is quite a bit darker than that and I haven't quite achieved it yet in the colors that I used here. So all I'm going to do is glaze over the left side there again. And I'm going to use a little bit bigger brush here to do that. And make sure I'm using the right color. So it's just a little bit of blue. And I'm just going to go over that again. It's right from the top here. And you can do this incrementally. You don't, don't need to go crazy in the color the first time you go in. And then that way it will let you adjust things later on just the values. So I just put a little bit more into here by just I'm just touching my brush there and then letting it run down. I know it'll run to where the wet is right here and that's it. It won't go any further. It's a little splatter for a seagull later. And I'm going to go ahead and let this actually run down over this section here just so I get darker and then I can keep going all the way down into here and right to the bottom like that and it will give you some neat contrast. And just need to run this down a little bit more. See it's stopping where the dry is. It's creeping down just a little bit here. but. Just going to help it along. Just like that there. Okay, so the next thing is to start on the uh, rocks here. That uh, And we're going to use a flat brush for that as well here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a bigger flat brush for the first. The bigger the brush you use, the uh, less overworked your painting is going to kind of look. Because it almost forces you to make nice, powerful brush strokes in here, and and just the shape of these strokes gives you some little some details. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that right in there like that. Get a little darker. Now I did say there's some you know there's some neat colors that you can see in here, and it's important to to paint. 
wet in wet when you're doing this kind of thing and it makes it look less overworked. And I'm going to go ahead and do this over here carefully. I can see my lines I painted. And go ahead and come across like that. Yeah. Like that. And I'm going to change the color a bit. So I rinse my brush on the paper towel to dry it off and I can pick up some some fresh pigment here and it's going to look different and the stuff below and you can use the corner of the brush to make your little details so you're not just painting flat kind of like that there and I'm just going to leave some white sparkles and the reason is I'm going to drop in some different colors in there and I don't want to be, you're going to, if you drop in uh, colors onto what you've already painted there, then it'll just look like you're, you know, a darker version of it and a blend of those two colors where you can have a lot purer colors if you're painting on the white. So I'm going to pick up some cobalt turquoise into here while it's still wet and into the white areas there it's going to have a little more intensity. That's it. It's quite dark down here. And darken that up just while it's still wet in there in different spots. Make it look like rocks. Into the shadows here, like that. And right around the shoreline here, it's quite dark. And just picks up some more neutral gray in there, leave it darker there. Get a little line into there and darken that up. Make some little shadows in behind here and just let it, in the wet pigment, it'll just blend itself, it'll just paint itself there. So I'm doing a little dot here, I don't quite like it, but I'm afraid if I pick it up, I can't touch above it. There we go, like that. So very, very carefully you can do that. And this part here is just like a piling or something, so I'm just going to paint that in with this brush here. Like a concrete footing or something, not a piling. I think that's what it is, I can't really tell from the photo. And then I quite like this, uh, I'm just going to put in some of this orange sunrise or sunset color into here through out there. I got some sepia so I'm going to just change the hue, change the color of that. Sorry for the dog barking on the background here but we got to keep painting. It's almost like plain air painting. There we go. And then I've got some uh, uh, kosher salt here. I'm going to drop some of the kosher salt into here in different areas. And then some rock salt too. So we'll drop the rock salt in there. The rock salt's going to just want to go to the bottom. So you kind of got to place it in there carefully. And hope it stays where it's wet. Like that. And there's some details right there that are forming. So the rock salt, we're going to let that sit for a bit. And uh, the uh, kosher salt as well. And uh, we'll be back in a second once it's dry. Alright, so I let this dry. Uh, I didn't leave it dry. I dried it with hair dryer actually. And, but I, I did uh, let it sit while I was painting the other things for, you know, on camera. And uh, maybe a little bit longer so that the salt could dissolve a little bit and then give you the nice effects. But I think it's done its job here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of it here. And then basically all that's left are little details and you can go, you know, darker. And the rim here, I'm just looking at the actual photograph, and there's a little bit of dark here. I've got to get in the way of the camera here for a second. Paint that dark there, maybe a dark little shadow there. There. Not sure what this lens look like. It looks like in there, but I can't see it very good, very well. I can't see it very well in the photograph. And there's a shadow under here. Paint that in. If you don't overdo it with these details, this window here is is 
dark, so I'm just going to paint that in dark. You can hear my hand getting into the salt here and the salt hitting the floor, I think. That's what the weird noise was. Now this would be easier to do with a small flat brush as well, but if you're careful, you can get it done here. And any small things like that, so you still want your bead and then just let the paint come down into the wet and it'll look more natural. And you can also drop in some blue into there, just or some orange, just to give it some interesting color variations. And that goes right about to there. Yeah, we get a little bit more into here. So there, I'm making, making my bead. The bead is that, the pigment pooling at the bottom here, and I'm just going to tease it down here because it stops where the paint, where the uh, paper is dry. And if you let it come down here, It'll give you a nice effect. And to see the pigment is pooling at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and dry my brush a little bit here. I don't have to remove the pigment that's on there or wash it. I just gotta dry it and then pick up the excess like that. So I will drop in, I'm gonna drop in a little bit of cat orange here. It's for interest in these windows. Maybe a little bit of cobalt blue. Okay. Whoop, that's way too much cobalt blue. A little bit of cobalt blue. It just makes it look a little bit more like windows. Just about like that. And you can give some a little... Nothing wrong with adding some little details under there. Using a color, you know. Just like that, and I'm having a little look, another look at the painting here, or the photograph, I should say. Looking for more detail to put in, and basically that's it. You know, uh, to not overwork a painting is is going to give you that calm look, like this has, and I think we've achieved that there. I may look at this. I may darken this panel here. Um, this looks like kind of one. I'm just studying the photograph as I'm looking at this too to give you some sort of analysis of anything that needs uh, painting here. Actually, I'm just going to go in. I got some gouache. I saw this here. These uh, windows are just reflecting white. I think they're windows and there's a little bit of something reflecting white there. So with the gouache, we can just give it the little highlights that it needs. And this is again something you don't want to overdo. And I can do the real roof line here as well, but you don't want it disappearing too much against the uh, sky here either. So I've got to get my hand in the way here. I'm just putting a little bit of white gouache on the right side of that, right there. And this panel, I'm going to brighten this panel up here. Well, thanks to all the new subscribers and existing subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do. It helps out the channel and uh, get views and post more free content. And I do have affiliate links in the descriptions for uh, uh, three art suppliers that'll give you a discount when you order. You can check those out. And there's also my uh, the list of materials that I normally use on there. Also, if you choose to have a look, and yeah, it's going to brighten that side up too there, and this one here for the heck of it, and a little bit in detail. So and that's it. I've got to hold back and not uh, overdo that gouache in there. So I think it's pretty much done. Thanks for joining me. We will see you next time. Have fun painting.